This is going to save you time. This is going to save you money. And this is going to build something that can scale and grow and actually deliver results for you. And so first, what is the problem with vibe coding? Well, vibe coding is a lot of fun. I do it when I want to relax and I don't have a serious project in mind and I just want to play around and see what I can push the AI to do, right? So maybe I'm building a space shooter, for example. I vibe code it, I'm using Super Whisper, talking back and forth to the AI, having it tweak things, not really caring about the quality of the code, right? The code might just be a massive HTML file with JavaScript and 3JS and I don't care about app structure, code quality. Eventually it's gonna go off the rails, you're gonna ask it to do something very simple and you're gonna end up in this loop where it just fails over and over again or maybe it fixes one thing and breaks something else and then you're going back and forth. And next thing you know, you've used up all of your cursor credits for a month and a day or two. But if you wanna build something serious that you can build onto, add features, and build a complex application from the ground up, or maybe you wanna work in a brownfield environment where you already have an existing application where you're trying to use the agent mode to build something for you, you need workflows and you need some stability. What I'm gonna teach you today is a method that can work for anybody. My name is Brian. I have over 20 years of experience in software development and the techniques and methodologies that I've learned over time from small startups to big enterprises, that all of that works and can be applied to quote vibe coding or agentic coding with an IDE such as cursor. So what is this method that I use? Well, this is a breakthrough method and I call it agile AI driven development. This takes the best pieces of agile the workflow that I use on big teams or small teams that I still use to this day, but I apply it to agent personas to build an application that is maintainable and scalable, secure and understandable where features can continuously be added onto it. So let's first explain what the breakthrough method is and how you can put it into practice. And don't worry, I'm gonna take you through every step along the way. This is actually gonna be a multi-video series. This first video is gonna lay the groundwork and show you how you can save tons of money by setting up your initial project plan correctly so you can then feed it into the AI agents and have it flawlessly build your app step by step. And then I will show you how we do each of these, keeping costs down and having fun along the way. All right, so this is the breakthrough method for agile AI-driven development. First of all, we're gonna start with a business analyst. And this AI agent is gonna do advanced thinking and help us refine our idea. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna even code, right? We're gonna start with a business analyst. We're gonna use the advanced thinking mode from different LLMs, and we are gonna just refine our idea and talk back and forth with this BA to elicit all the details that we can then flesh out our idea and hand it off to the project manager. The project manager is gonna take that well-distilled idea from the BA, and then it's gonna do deep research. So you can use OpenAI or Gemini's deep research modes. They will analyze your idea, they will search the web, they, were, they will search for similar applications, styles, technologies, and come back with a report or a PRD, if you ask for a PRD, a product requirements document, detailing the application and what we are gonna build. By knowing what we're gonna build from the beginning to reach our MVP product, we have a clear roadmap and we'll be able to build it incrementally without massive changes along the way. We're then gonna have the project manager ask us questions to further clarify things, just like we did with the business analyst in the first step. We're then gonna pass it off to our architect persona. The architect is gonna take the output from both the BA and the PM and produce an architecture document. But we're gonna clearly tell the architect, we need this to have everything decided and in place using our technology choices or the technologies that it recommends with its advanced thinking mode, it's gonna produce a very detailed document so that when we're then building the full project from end to end, it has all of the details that the agents need. So this will have all the language choices, all the libraries that we're gonna use, pages that we're gonna have, if it's gonna be a web app, the transitions, security, um, infrastructure, deployment, database schemas, data models, by having it all spelled out here in this document by this AI architect expert, we will now have a technical roadmap 
to meet our end goal. So now, once we have our architecture detailed, we're then gonna pass it off to the PO or the product owner. In the agile workflow, the product owner is the one that's really responsible for producing the artifacts that it can hand off to a scrum master, which we'll hand off to next, and implement the vision of the project manager over time. PO is gonna use advanced thinking mode again to come up with a task list. And what we're gonna tell the PO is take everything from the architect, take everything from the PM, and build a task list that is granular and sequenced in the exact logical order that very junior developers can take and implement one at a time, piece by piece, to build up the functionality from beginning to end. Not leaving out any steps, any manual things, any account setups, anything we might need to do to build out this application. The PO is gonna take this and hand this off to the Scrum Master. The Scrum Master is again gonna use advanced thinking. So, so far, by the way, all of this we can be doing outside of Cursor, saving a ton of money, producing these documents. And I'm gonna show you how it's very simple and trust me, you do not have to even have a lot of industry experience to do this. This will save you so much time. And honestly, this can be the funnest part, really piecing out what your application is gonna do and how it's gonna do it. But anyways, your Scrum Master is gonna take the output from the PRD, it's gonna take the architecture, it's gonna take the task list, it's gonna consider all of those, and it's gonna come up with all of the epics and stories to then hand off to the agents. So what are epics and stories? An epic is just a collection of stories or a logical grouping of small granular pieces of work. A story is basically one of those tasks that we just talked about. We're gonna have the story written in a way that it has all of the details that the agent needs to pick up one story in a new chat thread, and that's all it needs in its context to build this phase of the application. So it's gonna have any data models that it needs from the architecture, uh, file locations, project structure, understanding and context from the PRD, specifically to the one story it's done. What's been done before in previous stories? Each story is granular, so our developer agent can pick it up and implement it without having to look at other resources unless it needs to. That brings us to the last step, right? And that is the developer agent. Before we get to Cursor, we're gonna take all of our documents, we're gonna convert them all to Markdown if they're not in Markdown already, and we're gonna put them in our .ai folder. Once in Cursor, we will then have our files, all of our story files, which are ordered, right? The AI agent is gonna work on one story at a time. Some of these stories are gonna be enabler stories where we might need to help the agent to save some money, such as if we're gonna use uh, Vercel and Superbase, right? We might want to have the first story be set up an account, configure some environment variables, secure our secrets, et cetera, et cetera. Some of that might be doable by the agent, and some of that we might do ourselves. But that is all gonna be laid out in the stories. The Scrum Master will handle all of that for us, so we will also know step-by-step step what we need to do and what we can let the agent do. Every time the developer starts a new story, it's gonna go through this process. It's gonna pick up the next story. We're gonna start a brand new chat thread and tell the developer agent. It is gonna then test the story. If the tests pass, it will then push it. If the tests do not pass, we will correct until the story is complete and then we will continuously push updates. We are gonna constantly build up tests for our Hope application. It's a little bit more effort for the AI agent, but it is worth it in the long run. As you're building this application, you wanna make sure that as you add in more and more stories and functionality, you're not breaking previous code. So we'll keep building up a suite of tests, shooting for 80 to 90% test coverage, good test coverage, so we know everything we're building makes sense and continues to work. This works in industry, and I've tested this. This works with AI agents, and it's gonna work for us to build our dream project. In the next video, coming very soon, I'm gonna show you how I do most of this with Gemini and OpenAI to produce the documents we need for Cursor, and then how we set up Cursor to use these documents. It's gonna be a fun one, and I do recommend watching it. It will be out very soon. Think about this workflow that I've described and how you might even implement this workflow yourself. Now, what have I not said here? I have not said here anything about describing complex prompts or complex rules 
for your development agents. And that's because we're building this up from the ground up. So you're not guessing along the way. You're not vibe coding, but you are having fun. You are vibing with the AI to riff on your project ideas and think about what it's gonna be. But then you get a little bit more rigid. This is gonna save you time, this is gonna save you money, and this is gonna build something that can scale and grow and actually deliver results for you and not be an unmaintainable mess. This is the way if you wanna build anything from a very simple to-do app to a very complex SaaS application with multiple services, complex front ends, mobile apps, all working together. This will work. And the next few videos are gonna show you the exact way that I do this. So we'll see you next time. My name is Brian. Please leave me a message in the comments and let me know if you're using something like this or if this has got your wheels turning. I would love to know what you think about this. And before the next video, give this method a try and see what works for you. But I'm gonna show you really soon how it works. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Brian, Be Mad Code.